Hello, this is Tamil, and I just wanted to go over blending modes in Clip Studio Paint. And there's a lot of them, so I'll go as quickly as possible and I will let you know which ones are useful. Not all of them are great to use. So normal is basically what you start with and darken is gonna only uh, add color or the paint that you have if it's only going to darken the image. So if you have white and you have gray and you put white into darken layer, it will not show up at all. So next one is multiply. Multiply is actually very similar to darken except it adds color very nicely so you can use it for texturing. Depends on the image, I will show you later. Um, they're very similar but most of the time I use multiply. Color burn, linear burn, uh, very crazy intense effects. I don't use them that much, you can experiment. Subtract, uh, pretty crazy one, you're never gonna use one so forget about it. Lighten is the opposite of darken and screen is the opposite of multiply. If it's multiply and you have pure white, it will not show up. It will only show up the darks. Same goes for screen. If it's black on the image and you set it to screen, it will not show up. Color dodge and glow dodge are pretty useful that you can use for glowing effects and I will show you later as an example. Add and add glow, pretty similar to color dodge and glow dodge, but it really depends on the effect you're going for. I didn't use them that much, so you can experiment on your own. Overlay, soft light, hard light, super useful. Uh, basically the add color or mix color and uh, you can use it to add uh, lighting effects that are very subtle in your painting. Overlay is actually super interesting because it will not show up if it's a 50% gray. If it's black or white, it will affect your image. It will make the whites whiter or darks darker. I will show you later how it works. Difference, vivid light, linear light, never use them. Uh, difference is completely useless. Vivid light, linear light are worth taking a look. Pin light, maybe. Um, hard mix, never use it. Exclusion, don't use it. Dark in color, light in color, highly recommend you just experiment with it. It's not as useful. Uh, divide, never use it. Uh, hue, saturation, color, super useful. So hue will cha change only the local color of the entire scene. So if you have a green apple and you paint hue with red, it will not affect saturation, it will not affect the values, it will only affect the color. Saturation is the opposite of that. It will not affect the hue. It will not affect the um, the color of it. It will only affect the brightness of it and the saturation of it. So a little bit of both. And the color will actually is a combination of hue and saturation. It's the hue and the saturation together. It will not affect your values in the image. So it does not really work well for coloring. Uh, weirdly enough, color doesn't really good. It's not really good for exact coloring. Uh, I will show you later. Uh, brightness, uh, very useful for adjustment layers or if you have a curve or levels and you really, really crank it, a lot of the times you see hue, I mean, uh, saturation come up, right? The, uh, the darks become very saturated and maybe you don't want that. If you have that problem, set it to brightness and it will work wonders because it will only affect uh, the lightness. It will not affect the color, it will not affect anything else. Just to quickly go over the ones that are useful again. Normal, dark and multiply, lighten, screen, color dodge, overlay, soft light, hard light, linear light, and color. Uh, these are the ones that I use a lot and I recommend you checking those out the most. Uh, you can obviously use the other modes, but they're not as useful in my opinion and you can also check out other YouTubers and other artists talking about it. They also say that some of them are just like not useful, especially for painters, like at all. So just watch out for that. So the super simple way to add texture to your finished painting is you can go into the texture assets that Clip Studio Paint provides for you. 
which is really, really useful. So it's usually on the right side tab if you have your uh, Clip Studio Paint on default. And so as you can see, I added uh, a texture and if you go into Clip Studio Tips article, you can actually see which one I used. Um, so on the right side is the regular painting, on the left side is the textured one. So I just set it to overlay and they added a lot like a grainy texture to it and uh, it did not affect the white as you can see uh, at all and that is the point of overlay. It will not affect pure black and it will not affect pure white. So never uh, start your painting with very very dark. So I suggest you start your painting somewhere here in the middle and then you can build on top which is super super useful. So just to show you this is another way uh, to just show you that uh, how overlay works. So I, I painted black and painted white and I did a 50% gray. It did not show up 50% gray. It uh, lightened the and made it more contrasty over here on the right side and on the left side the blacks made the, um, the image darker and more saturated. So this is how you use it and uh, in case you want for example to make the image pop a little bit you can just like duplicate the entire painting and then you can just set it to overlay and you can uh, set it to maybe 30 percent or so depends on your image so and it just makes it more contrasty it depends let's say 30. yep so this is another way you can use overlay and uh, pretty similar overlay to multiply um, I love using multiply for my texture so I got this texture and uh, it feels like paper or like a cloth and if you set it to multiply you can see that it adds this traditional look to your painting and makes it look like it was actually painting on a canvas or like a piece of paper it's a very very nice effect if you're going for something more traditional highly recommend checking it out uh, just set it to multiply. If you don't like the effect, you can tune it down with opacity. Another way that I use overlay is uh, actually using halftone. Um, I just get a halftone brush and I pick this color. So for example, if I, I'm over here, I pick this color or pure black and I just overlay it with a um, halftone brush and it gives this like very nice stylized effect. Maybe that's something you want to look into. Pretty nice um, another way to use overlay. Another layer style that I highly recommend checking out is color dodge. This is two images. I did not paint anything uh, extra on it. This is exactly how it was. I just set it to color dodge because there was a lot of airbrushing in the middle. It just made it glow. So it's pretty nice if you're adding like magic or like spells on your painting. So just check it out uh, and use color dodge and a lot of times you can actually make a, a little bit part like a small part of your painting stand out like a lot if you use color dodge because it will add this glow effect to it so it also is nice to use it as a bounce light depending on your painting so right here i have a very very dark image on the left and on the right, I literally just duplicated it and I set it to color dodge and I adjusted the opacity. And then you can see that it's way more contrasty. It has a lot more color and the moon has a, a lot of the glow and it's very nice. And uh, also sometimes I have the image duplicated and they go into blur and they do a Gaussian blur. It just works wonders. It has this gloom effect and uh, it's pretty nice uh, so check it out uh, try to mess around with it um, the last example i have is for color dodging for a light effect as i was saying it's pretty nice for light so on the left side this is how it looked it very very yellow i don't like how it looks exactly on the right side this is i just uh this is what i painted so I added red at the bottom and I added some yellow at the top and I set it to color dodge and as you can see it made the image 100 times better. It just makes it glow, it just makes it look nice. It's really, really amazing. So if you use it subtle, 
it will work. Don't overdo it, set it to low opacity and mess around with it. Don't like go crazy with it. So another adjustment uh, blending is color. So I have this old painting on the top and I turned it into a painting on the bottom. Uh, as you can see, it has a lot more color variation and that's because I painted turquoise right here. So let me just quickly show you what I did uh, so that you don't have too many questions. <laughs> uh, so I got this color and I literally just painted like, like this, right? I just painted it on top and then I set it to color. And I just adjusted the way uh, the opacity worked and the way the brush strokes were. And I added more green here and I added more blue in the sky. And it's just literally just a color gradation. It just makes it looks a lot nicer. And if your image is like very dull, um, it's a very nice way to add some color to it and not mess too much with the painting. Keep in mind that it will not affect pure darks as I was saying before. So as you can see, this is pure dark and this is pure dark and it did not change at all. So um, just keep that in mind that if you go too, do, too dark or too white, it will not affect the image. So uh, again, work within here, move within the midtones for the most of the painting. And once you've finished, then you can push the darks and the, the blacks and the whites and all that. So this is just a simplified example of how the color mode works. If you have crazy colors and you want to unify them, you just add one color and then you set it to low opacity and it works very, very nicely to make it cohesive, to make it united, super useful. And another way to use color, very, very important. If you want to check your values for your painting, do not go into layer, adjustment layer or correction layer, hue saturation, and then you set it saturation to zero. Do not do that. This is not how you check for your values. So on the left side, you can see that it does not work. It does not give you a contrasty image. But on the right side, I used black. So I just literally made a new, la new layer and I made color black and I just color it in, right? I just color it in and I have the entire image black and then I set it to color. And this is how you check for your values. This is way better, way um, more information. It will work wonders for you. So as you can see, the whites are not as white and you can see the darks are not as dark. So it's really, really hard to see if you did your values wrong or right. There's a lot more ways you can use color blending uh, layers, but these are the ones that are very major for me and this is how I use them personally. So I hope this helped. Uh, it's a lot of information. If you want to take it slow, please check out Clip Studio Paint's uh, tips of the month. I wrote an article on this. Uh, it will be in the description. The link will be in the description. So yeah, uh, I hope you learned something and happy painting.